Today is Friday, May 24th. What to know about billions of taxpayer dollars going to farmers and the multi-million dollar deal Harvey Weinstein just made. Plus a mile-wide asteroid, why Amazon will pay you for a 3D body scan, and the new thing to look for on Rotten Tomatoes. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The Trump administration will give $16 billion to help farmers. NPR reports it's meant to keep them afloat as they deal with the consequences of the U.S.-China trade tensions, which it seems is not going away anytime soon. The money will go to farmers who grow a variety of crops from soybeans to chickpeas to cherries, as well as help dairy and pork producers. Remember, after President Trump raised tariffs on Chinese imports, China retaliated, placing a higher tax on U.S. goods sent to China, and the farming industry has been hit hard. Keep in mind, many farmers are Trump supporters, so this financial bailout is likely President Trump trying to keep it that way. Speaking of aid, a $19 billion disaster relief bill is expected to head to the president's desk. The House is expected to pass it today, and the Senate approved it yesterday. The money will go to places hit by recent natural disasters. But we didn't get here without months of tense negotiations first. The president wanted the deal to include money for a border wall, but did not want to give any more money to Puerto Rico's hurricane recovery. Well, NBC News reports the bill does give money to Puerto Rico and does not give it to the border. So it took a while for Trump to come around on this one, but apparently he has. Trump now says he supports it and is expected to sign the bill. A deal is in the works meant to settle lawsuits and compensate alleged victims of disgraced Hollywood movie producer Harvey Weinstein. The Wall Street Journal reports the $44 million tentative settlement is between Weinstein, the several women accusing him of sexual misconduct, his movie company, and the New York Attorney General's office. It would settle civil lawsuits against Weinstein and some of the people he's worked with. And the money would come from his movie studio's insurance, not his personal bank account. Still, one alleged victim told CNN it's a form of justice without having to put the victims through the stress of a trial. A judge will ultimately decide whether or not to finalize this deal early next month. Weinstein has admitted to wrongdoing, but denies many of the claims, including rape. But to be clear, this would not stop a criminal case that's still pending against Weinstein in New York. It's being called an extraordinary archaeological find. Historians believe they found the last known U.S. slave ship. It's known as the Clotilda, and USA Today says experts found it near Mobile, Alabama. In the 1860s, the ship brought over more than 100 people who were kidnapped from Africa. It was more than 50 years after the U.S. banned new slaves from being brought here. So to hide from the law, the captain of the ship burned it and let it sink. Now the state plans to preserve the newly found ship, saying it represents a dark era in history, but acts as tangible evidence of slavery. It was a week of deadly storms, and it's not over yet. More severe weather from tornadoes to heat waves is expected to slam parts of the U.S. through the holiday weekend. We'll start in the Plains. That's where a deadly tornado killed three people in the capital of Missouri this week. It left a lot of damage, too. The Weather Channel described the tornado's path as a, quote, war zone, and there were 34 tornadoes reported across the region. And that area is not in the clear just yet. Missouri, Texas, and Kansas are all at risk again. More tornadoes are possible, but the main threat is now flash flooding and harsh winds. And severe weather could also impact the millions of Americans traveling during the three-day holiday weekend. A mile-wide asteroid will zoom past the Earth this weekend, but don't worry, scientists say it's harmless. But they did add it will be one of the closest flybys in recent history. It's going to be about 3 million miles from Earth, clocking in at 50,000 miles an hour. NBC News reports the asteroid won't be alone. It has a little moon, and astronomers will be watching it all through telescopes. They hope it'll help in efforts to prepare in case an asteroid really does come too close. All right, much more news still ahead, but first, a quick break for today's sponsor. America's beverage companies are working together to support families as they reduce the sugar in their diets. Coke, Dr. Pepper, and Pepsi are providing more great-tasting options with less sugar or no sugar at all, putting clear calorie labels on every product, and working with public health organizations and other national and local partners to build stronger, healthier communities. So... With more choices, smaller portions, and less sugar, American families can find the balance that's right for them. Learn more about how these three competitors are working together at balanceus.org. That's balanceus.org. Now back to the news. 
So I briefly mentioned the holiday weekend before, but this upcoming Monday is Memorial Day. So many people will be off school and work, and you can expect things like the post office to be closed. Of course, Memorial Day is an official federal holiday, always observed the last Monday of May. But don't forget, this is not just the unofficial start of summer with barbecues, discounts, and a three-day weekend. The real meaning of the day is to honor the men and women who died while serving in the U.S. military. And there are likely events all around your area. And a quick note, because of the holiday, there will not be an episode of The Newsworthy on Monday. So I'll be back getting you all caught up on everything on Tuesday instead. For those of you who might be grilling out this weekend, check any beef you have because it could be recalled. CBS News says the recall affects more than 62,000 pounds of raw beef. It includes 40 products that were shipped all over the U.S., mostly steaks, ribs, and brisket. The concern is E. coli, found during random testing. The meat recalled was packaged on April 19th. And check the inside of the USDA mark of inspection. If it shows EST-788, then it's likely on the list of recalled items. Facebook says it deleted more than 2 billion fake accounts in just three months, a record high for the company. In Gadget reports, Facebook is dealing with an uptick in fake accounts and says bad actors have attempted to create a bunch of them all at one time. On top of that, Axios reports Facebook took down nearly a million posts that were about drug sales. Facebook has been accused of fueling the opioid epidemic in the past. The company says about 80% of the posts were removed by Facebook without being reported first. So that could mean Facebook's artificial intelligence systems to block certain content are actually working. AT&T users can now pay their phone bills with Bitcoin. It's apparently the first big U.S. wireless carrier to offer this. Engadget says payments are done through BitPay, and customers will see the option when they log on to AT&T's website. AT&T says it's always looking for ways to improve and is happy it can offer customers a different way to pay. Cryptocurrencies are still pretty volatile, and they're still fighting for legitimacy. Amazon wants to take a 3D scan of your body, and in return, it will give you a $25 gift card. Amazon says it's for research. Business Insider reports the company could be working on a way for customers to virtually try on clothes. Amazon says it will take 3D scans, photos, and videos of your body while you're in form-fitting swimwear. You'd have to show up in person at the New York City offices, but first, you sign up online. And speaking of Amazon, the company is also working on a voice-activated device that can tell what mood you're in. Bloomberg reports you could wear the device on your wrist, and it uses a microphone to listen to your voice to see what emotions you're feeling. And then it's being described as a health and wellness product. But this one isn't final, and there aren't many other details. Rotten Tomatoes wants to make sure the movie reviews you see on its site are actually from people who have seen the movie. Variety says the site created a new verified rating feature. As long as you buy your ticket on Fandango, your review will be marked as verified on Rotten Tomatoes. The goal? Stop people from lowering movie ratings on purpose. Some do it just because they don't like the actor or something else that has nothing to do with how good the movie actually is. Of course, the new feature is also to bring in more ticket sales for Fandango. Both companies told Deadline the verified scores won't be that much different than unverified, meaning it won't affect the overall rating that much. But the change should boost users' confidence. The feature is out now. And that's it for today. You are all caught up. If you want to read more about any of the stories we talked about, just go to the homepage of thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by 4 in the morning, except on holidays. So I'll be back with more news on Tuesday. Have a great long weekend.